The concept of concubines in Asian culture dates back centuries. While the term concubine brings to mind the image of a beautiful and desirable woman, the life of a concubine was far from glorious. Concubines were considered both alluring and mysterious, these women had to adapt to a life of submission and perversity. First, they were taken in by wealthy families to serve as mistresses or secondary wives. While their status varied depending on the family they belonged to, the general perception of concubines is that they led a life of subservience and degradation. Being property of men provided a sense of certainty but also led to the normalization of many creepy practices. This video will explore some of the creepy things that were normal to Asian concubines. It will cover a range of topics, including the brutal training process, the sexual exploitation and abuse, and the lack of autonomy and mobility. Training and Selection Process The selection process for concubines was often brutal. Families would send representatives to journey into the countryside and towns for beautiful young women who fit the desired parameters of what a concubine should be. This often involved checking the women's physical fitness, health, and overall appearance to ensure that they met the family's high standards. Concubines were usually sold or given by their families as it was unlikely to be the woman's own choice. Once selected, the concubines were then sent to specialized training schools. These schools were designed to teach the women everything from manners and etiquette to sexual prowess. The training is sometimes harsh and rigorous. It often involves physical punishment and isolation. The women were expected to be submissive and obedient, and any sign of rebellion or disobedience would result in severe punishment. But here is a catch, if you are a young girl from an enemy state or vassal state, the percentage of being selected is high. Some emperors of the Ming dynasty had Mongolian and Korean concubines. Mongolian concubines are perhaps captives while Korean concubines are sacrifices from Korea. It was a custom then to reserve young female war captives for emperors while young male war captives would be made eunuchs working in the palaces. In all, being a concubine was a respectable status as it was better being a concubine to a rich man than being a wife to someone poor. Contested Fertility Fertility was a fundamental part of the existence of Asian concubines, as their primary function was to bear children for their husbands if the main wife could not produce a heir. In places like China, the concubine of a king could achieve power, especially if her son also became a monarch. Although a concubine could produce heirs, her children are often considered inferior in social status to a wife's children. The child of a concubine had to show filial duty to two women, their biological mother and their legal mother, the wife of their father. In the Song dynasty, it was considered a serious breach of social ethics to promote a concubine to a wife. But this changed during the Qing dynasty, 1644-1911, when the status of concubines improved. It became permissible to promote a concubine to wife, if the original wife had died and the concubine was the mother of the only surviving son. Lack of autonomy and mobility Concubines had very little autonomy or mobility. They were essentially prisoners in the households where they worked, and were not permitted to leave or have any contact with the outside world, other than a select few family members. This isolation was intended to prevent the women from forming close relationships with anyone outside the household, and to ensure that they remained completely submissive to their masters. The lack of mobility also meant that concubines were unable to seek medical attention or receive help if they were in danger. For example, if a concubine was being physically abused by her master, she had nowhere to turn for help. She was not also allowed to speak ill of the master. Hair Sacrifice Hair is considered a symbol of beauty in the culture of the Chinese, 
and hence women were expected to maintain long and luscious hair. But in the era of the Asian concubines, the length of hair signaled something else, submissiveness. When a girl was sold to a wealthy family, her hair would be cut as a symbol of being a servant, where only the husbands or masters could decide on the styles and length of hair. The women needed to have long hair available to her, which were then used as a felt sense of comfort during death, loss of family members or any other devastating events that might happen in her life. The practice of hair cutting was a means of asserting dominance and control, forcing the women to keep their hair short as they were considered mere property of the men. Sexual Exploitation and Abuse Perhaps the most disturbing aspect of the life of a concubine was the sexual exploitation and abuse they endured. While some families treated their concubines with relative kindness and respect, others saw them solely as sexual objects. The women were required to be available for sex at any time, and many were subjected to rape and sexual abuse from their masters and other members of the household. In many cases, concubines were also forced to bear children for their masters. These children were often taken away from the concubines and raised by the main wife or family members. The concubines themselves had no say in the matter and were often left to suffer in silence. Foot Binding Foot binding is one of the most well-known traditional practices of China, where the feet of young girls are bound to prevent growth beyond a certain point, usually between the ages of four and nine. The practice was first considered common among the elite classes, as small feet were deemed a symbol of beauty and status, and hence highly esteemed. Eventually, the concept became widespread, and most young girls had their feet bound before they entered puberty. The process of foot binding was highly painful and involved the breaking of the toes, primarily through a series of compressions and wrapped bindings. It often resulted in permanent deformity and lifetime of pain for the women. Foot binding was not only a norm but also a mandatory measure for anyone who wished to be sold in the market for potential concubines, meaning women with respectable size feet were considered inferior and unworthy of the status. The concept of concubines throughout history has been complex and often controversial. While some may find the idea of Asian concubines creepy or unsettling, it is crucial to acknowledge and understand the historical and cultural context that allowed this to happen. It is imperative to appreciate different cultures and respect their traditions and beliefs, while also critically examining and challenging practices that may be oppressive or harmful to certain groups of people. Ultimately, it is up to us as individuals to educate ourselves and approach cultural differences with an open mind and a willingness to learn and grow.